Right, let's hit the ground running. This is Hyperliquid, and what you're looking at is FXRP USDC. So, as you can see, this is the one hour chart. If I go down to 15 minutes, you can see that it's a pretty new chart. That's because this is just launched yesterday. So there's not enough data for it to populate a proper chart. But what's important is that FXRP is now tradable on Hyperliquid. And this is a spot trade. This isn't a leverage trade. There's already XRP related uh, tokens on here, if not XRP itself, but on a leveraged basis. Let me just do a quick search and show you. If I just type in XRP there and select all, not just spot, you can see there's the XRP USDC 20X, XRP USD E 20X, and of course you have FXRP USDC spot, which is the new um, token. You can see the open interest there has dash dash dash. 8 hour funding, dash, dash, because there's no data, it's brand new. So shout out to Flare for launching uh, that on FXRP. The effects that that's going to have is pretty, pretty much just more interest, more ways to buy FXRP, and more ways for people to do things with their X FXRP that have it, apart from just staking it on the Flare ecosystem and earning yield. So um, not financial advice, your own research. Um, I was going to say... These uh, platforms, man, they all just look pretty much the same these days. I mean, like, if you look at this, right, if you didn't realize that this was hyper liquid, right, let, let, let me pick one of these um, tokens. Actually, let me pick one with more uh, data so I can illustrate what I'm talking about. Hold on. Let's say Solana, right? I mean, this just looks the same as Binance or Coinbase or anything else. Because these are just forks of each other, right? They, they, why reinvent the wheel? This trading platform setup is one that's been around for a while, and anybody can set one up by just forking the original code or any open source code that's available on GitHub or whatever. And then you can actually just launch your own exchange. As long as you're able to run all the servers and all the nodes and everything and plug into all the required databases and blockchains, then you're good to go. This is why there's so many of these clones all over the place. But with each one of them, you have to be careful because they come with their own sets of uh, market makers and books and stuff. Then liquidity is different from one exchange to the other. So you've got to be careful with that. You could get liquidated actually on one exchange and not another exchange for the same trade, even though they do link to each other via oracles and stuff like that, right? So be careful with these things. Uh, but... It, the, the good part of this, the good side of this is that it, it's basically recognizable. The learning curve is very, very, very uh, flattened out. It's not as steep as if you were just learning this stuff. You have to learn each exchange from scratch, okay? So all of these symbols are all familiar to most people. If you use Binance, then this would be a piece of cake. A lot of the DEX environments as well now also look like this. Obviously, some of the... Um, buttons will be different because there's some things that you can't do in decentralized exchanges or whatever but pretty much you can get the same interface now with a lot of dexes so things are moving forward things are maturing in crypto and trading is getting easier and easier um, as the days go by okay so before i carry on let's just have a quick look at what the market is doing sentiment is slightly recovering from being down yesterday for whatever reason we're still over three trillion dollars in market cap which is always a good thing we are at neutral which is where we were yesterday we're flirting with fear again because of the macro events i'm going to talk about that later on in this video what i think is happening and why things are cooling off slightly xrp just being flat at two dollars and ten it's kept as um, head above water so we're still over two dollars so that's a good thing um, bitcoin cooled off significantly actually uh, having approached that one hundred thousand um, dollar mark which is obviously a psychological barrier for for many but generally it seems that we're in oversold territory for most of these cryptos so basically we have a group of things happen all at the same time we have wall street also dumping uh, in the last couple of days we had outflows from etfs which again involved wall street um, we had macro events heat up which i'm going to talk about a bit later we had liquidations by 
market makers who saw all of the enthusiastic 100x, 200x <laughs> leverage trades that people are putting in these exchanges that I've just showed you. Um, and things cooled off. Uh, but if you think about it, if you zoom out a little bit, actually the cooling off isn't really that bad. It's just because it dampened an enthusiasm. It looked like we were about to take off and then it just sort of dampened it a bit. As you can see, it's not actually that much of a cool off in the grand scheme of things. If you zoom out, it's kind of like a little sort of bump in the road and it looks like we might take off again regardless, depending on what happens. Um, anyway, in terms of good news, you probably already heard about Amazon Bedrock and the collaboration with XRP Ledger on certain things. I've seen a lot of videos about this, so I know that the news is out, but I've seen very few videos actually talking about the actual benefit to the XRP Ledger. Now, this isn't a price thing. This isn't Amazon integrating XRP into their website or anything like this. This is a an infrastructure level sort of design level collaboration. So as it is, the XRP Ledger is already one of the most efficient uh, blockchains in the world, if not the most efficient blockchains, definitely the best in the top 100 and definitely the best when it comes to dealing with tokenization of real world assets, payments, blah, blah, blah. It's fast, it's efficient, and it's very, very cheap. So basically the XRP Ledger runs on a high performing C++ code, okay? And the fast transactions are processed across a decentralized ledger, but that generates complex logs and traditionally took Ripple engineers two to three days to analyze. So all of these logs that are complex used to take two days, basically a backlog, a bit of a radioactive waste that had to be dealt with in the background, which it, while not slowing the actual blockchain down, was pretty laborious at two to three days. By the way, that's not more than other blockchains, by the way, right? Other blockchains have even longer, uh, even worse logs and longer time to process. But XRP Ledger strives to get even better than they already are. So even though these operations are being slowed, doesn't affect actual blockchain operations, but we'd rather not have to spend two to three days analyzing these logs. Okay, so for example, th this article gives how efficient and cheap the XRP ledger is. A recent 4.8 million XRP transfer from Upbit only cost $0.02. That highlights XRP ledgers on matched speed and efficiency. To compare this, I transferred $100 yesterday between two exchanges. I think it was Binance and Coinbase, $100. And I transferred uh, USDT on the Ethereum blockchain, and that cost me 20 cents. So that cost me 10 times as much to move $100 uh, <laughs> than it took to move $4.8 million on the XRP ledger. Now, of course, the gas fees are somewhat related to the amount being sent on the Ethereum blockchain, roughly, but um, it's not exactly a direct relationship. So at some point, I think it caps out. It's not like an infinitely growing percentage or something like that, right? But um, depends on a lot of things, traffic, congestion, time of the day, which, uh, you know, validators you use, whatever, whatever. So there are many reasons that contribute to the gas fees of Ethereum, on Ethereum. And also some of these exchanges also charge commissions. But on the XRP ledger, the fees are almost completely negligible, right? So what this AI, by the way, the bedrock is AWS's AI. It's, it's like a GPT or whatever, one of those things, right? Um, what it can do is reduce that process in time when they look through the logs and analyze all of the radioactive waste that used to take two to three days to do to two to three minutes. And that slashes processing that used to take days. So it accelerates the engineer's workflows and primes the XRP ledger for future upgrades. So basically what this is, is getting the XRP ledger ready for the future, okay? Now, the way it is now, all of the transactions that the XRP ledger is having to deal with are easily taken care of, okay? Easily taken care of, absolute breeze. But where we're going with pretty much the entire world going to be tokenized on the XRP ledger, and XRP bridging all these currencies across the world, we're going to see a monumental rise in transactions on the XRP ledger. And for XRP ledger to be able to deal with this monumental task, 
it needs to improve even better and scale better. And this is one of the things that uh, could maybe slow things down a little bit when that kind of level of utility arrives. And using this AI to attack this problem now and pretty much solve the problem, that's going to you know make sure that the XRP ledger is ready for prime time, which it is ready for what it's doing now and the next future, uh, the near future. But in the sort of more distant future, when your house is tokenized on the XRP ledger and the government's voting system is happening on the XRP ledger and your banks are running on the XRP ledger, you're transferring money all over the place. An XRP ledger is bridging between uh, CBDCs across the world. All of these transactions are going to be hitting this same ledger and all of those logs are going to be generated are now going to be analyzed in a matter of minutes and not days. So that's significant. Talking of which, and getting uh, XRP Ledger ready for the future, there's also a lot of talk about quantum computing and how that is a big danger for blockchain in the not so distant future. Now, if you just look at the way AI has made such massive progress in the last couple of years, things that we thought were going to take 10, 15, 20 years have happened in the space of two to three years in a very, very short period of time. Now, quantum computing is, is in a lot of people's mouths right now. It seems like some sort of obscure, long distance thing. But hey, it might happen sooner than you think. And the XRP ledger of all of the blockchains that I can think about, there are probably some specific blockchains that are being built for that from scratch. The XRP ledger is looking to be ready for that as well. And um, it, at the moment, leads the way in quantum security and building quantum resistant blockchain security. Okay, so XRP Ledger has pioneered quantum proof transactions with the lithium cryptography. The rise of quantum computing has sparked growing concern in the blockchain community as traditional cryptographic methods face the risk of becoming obsolete. In a proactive move, shout out to the XRP Ledger people, the XRP Ledger is pioneering quantum resistant transactions through the implementation of the lithium cryptography, positioning itself as a front runner in next generation blockchain security. Don't you just love the engineers that work with the uh, XRP Ledger and their foresight and their forward thinking? While we're still thinking about the price, what good is a blockchain that gets completely decimated by <laughs> quantum attacks in, say, the next five years? You know, when you have the XRP ledger that's staying resilient and making sure that we're going to be around for a very long time indeed. OK, so quantum resistance security is no longer optional as blockchains power banks, corporations and critical infrastructure. Vulnerability to quantum attacks could threaten transactions, assets and trust by integrating quantum safe cryptography today. XRP ledger safeguards its network for the future staying ahead of evolving technological risks. Now, with these articles that I'm reading, I'm going to be leaving the link to them in the description, so go check that out so you can read and peruse them and digest them better and slower at a later time. There are also links to further reading in some of these articles so you can familiarize yourself with some of these technical aspects of the XRP Ledger if you're so interested. But suffice to know that the XRP Ledger is leading the bunch when it comes to quantum preparedness. So that's one less thing to worry about as an XRP holder than say a Solana holder or Cardano holder, uh, whose blockchains don't seem to be even doing anything at all about this stuff, okay? Now, obviously I haven't looked into those blockchains if they are or not, but it doesn't seem like they are. XRP Ledger seems to be the one that is ahead of the game yet again.